Arguably the most difficult thing to ban in Formula 1 has been flexible wings and bodywork. While it's clear that, to the teams, air elasticity has massive aerodynamic benefits, there's a fine line that the governing body must tread when trying to rein them in. After all, nothing can be infinitely rigid, otherwise it would fail as soon as load is applied. But that's not to say that they haven't tried to limit what the teams can do, sometimes more successfully than others. In the lead-up to and during the 1999 season, there were a number of high-profile accidents relating to flexing rear wings. Back then, the teams were trying to create an effect where the rear wing would tilt rearwards under load, giving the required downforce at lower speeds, but reducing that and drag as speed built. In response, the FIA introduced a stringent load test on the rear wing. This enabled the scrutineers to pull on the rear wing in a way that would detect any adverse rear flex, and determine if it was outside the bounds of the rules. Straight line speeds began to creep up again in the mid-2000s, although this time it became clear that the teams had found an entirely new way to achieve the effect. It was still created when load was added to the wing, but rather than tilt the entire wing, this time the teams had designed their rear wing planes in such a way that the gap between the main plane and the top flap would close up as speed built. This had the effect of stalling the rear wing, as airflow couldn't circulate around the wing in the usual manner, reducing downforce, drag, and increasing straight line speed. Then as the car slowed down, the gap would reopen and downforce would be restored. Formula 1's technical working group had already conceived a method to prevent this and had proposed it would be introduced in 2007. But with an increase in flexi wings across the grid causing concern and the expectation that it may get out of hand during the 2006 season, the FIA introduced slot gap separators from the Canadian Grand Prix. These separators were seen as a simple way of preventing the gap from closing as more load was applied. The two types of flexi rear wings weren't necessarily banned per se, the FIA just amended the regulations so that they wouldn't be allowed anymore. That's kind of the same thing, right? The next big scandal to hit Formula 1 over flexible bodywork seemed to have Red Bull in the dock at every conceivable turn, as the team often seemed to be singled out over its flexible front wings. In reality, it wasn't a Red Bull only witch hunt from the FIA, but the team appeared to have the best handle on how to apply aeroelasticity to the front wing, while also being able to defeat the FIA's load tests and they were the ones who were always seemed to be hit hardest when changes were made. The load test is, after all, a static test, meaning that if you can design your wing in a way that it can flex, beyond the load limit when out on track, the FIA can't penalise you. Therefore, Red Bull, and subsequently every other team, began to exploit that fact, using aeroelasticity techniques within their front wing designs with the express intent of circumventing the load tests. Each team went about it in their own way, given their understanding and development of the technique, but by and large, the teams tried to design the wings in a way that allowed the outer tips of the front wing to reach towards the ground. This effect would magnify the downforce being generated and, as a consequence, also change how the airflow was pushed around the face of the front tyre, altering the shape of the wake created. Consequently, this would also improve downforce over the rest of the car, with, for example, the floor now able to produce more downforce, as the wake of the tyre wasn't impinging on its performance as much. Meanwhile, over at McLaren, in an effort to chase down its rivals, the team developed its own flexible solution of sorts. But rather than have the wing bend down at the outer edges, McLaren instead started to tilt its wing back and forth. Like the rear wing solution we saw earlier, this arrangement not only helped to increase downforce, but also reduce its drag. To arrest any progress made by the teams, the FIA continued to make changes to the regulations throughout the next few years, as they tried to peg back any advances being made by the teams, all of which were dead set against losing any ground on their rivals. The problem is, there's no one-size-fits-all way of banning flexi wings, as the practice can be undertaken in many ways. The teams did hit more of a snag when the regulations regarding the width of the wing altered for 2014, as this obviously magnified how the loads are put through the wing at the measuring point. The change in the regulations that were introduced in 2017 changed the game once more, as Formula 1 ditched the conventional straight edge leading designs of the main plane in favour of the swept back arrowhead design. This changed the front wing's entire makeup and altered the associated load paths, leaving the teams to rethink how they prioritise various design aspects of the wing. Undeterred, it seems Red Bull found another way to beat the regulations and their competitors, as their front wing footplates were seen to be rotating at a different rate to the rest of the wing. This allowed the decoupled footplate to interact with the airflow in a different way depending on the speed of the car and alter the shape, speed and direction of the vortex shed from it. In turn, this would alter the shape of the wake turbulence created by the front tyre and improve aerodynamic performance downstream. It would appear that the simplified wings used since the 2019 regulation changes have seen the flexi wing practice recede, meaning that like their rear wing cousins, they haven't been banned outright either. 
Actually, on second thoughts, should this video be in the ban series? Do we have an attempt to nearly ban the series? Oh, it's not as catchy. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll carry on. But that's not to say that flexible front wings are gone forever. In fact, this goes to show the regulations like being on a treadmill, where any attempts to run off into the distance by the teams are met with an increase in difficulty from the FIA. So, although we may not see the crazy flexi wing designs of the past on today's F1 cars, keep your eyes out for the future, as the clever men and women in Formula 1 may not yet be done with the idea. But what do you think? Should F1 totally ban flexi wings, or should it give the designers more freedom? Let us know how you feel in the comments below, suggest your ideas on what we can cover next, and stay tuned for the next episode of Band.